Welcome to the last and final experiment of EEE 342 Introduction to Communication Engineering Laboratory. In this experiment, we will discuss three most popular digital modulation techniques, which are amplitude shift keying, phase shift keying, and frequency shift keying. So let's start our discussion with amplitude shift keying. We will mainly discuss about uh, two types of amplitude shift keying in this experiment. The first one is binary amplitude shift keying, and another one is on-off keying. Let's do with uh, let's start with the on-off keying first because uh, we have already discussed about on-off keying and am binary amplitude shift keying in our theory lectures. So I have attached those lectures with with the section in the box here as well. So I would suggest you to go back to those videos if you are not clear about what what, what you are going to do in amplitude shift keying because I'm not going to repeat any theoretical details here. I'm just going to design the whole circuit in some. Way. So without any delay, let's let's get started. Okay, so we at first need our digital sequence or digital signal. So for that, we will choose a uh, random. We will search for a uh, binary generator. So let's search binary here. Binary. So you will find a binary er, random generator here. So you just plug that inside of, of the screen. So set it apart. Okay. Now we have uh, we are done with our input sequence. So let's let's look into it. What are the parameters available? So here we are. Probability of 0, keep it 0.5. Source of initial seed. Okay, change it to parameter. And he will get an option of initial seed here. So, initial seed, you can just choose a random number here. I'm using 61. You can choose any, any random number. Depending on this initial seed, you will get different random sequences. Keep the rest of it as it is. Okay, so we are done with our random sequence. Just for a quick view of it, let's get a scope and check it out. Since we have a scope, so let's check out the uh, input sequence. Okay, so let's, let's just simulate it and check, check it out. We're done with simulation. Let's see what is in the scope. So this is our uh, signal. It is one zero one zero one zero one one zero zero. I'm repeating it once again. It's high, so it's one zero one zero one zero one one zero zero. Okay. So this is our random sequence. Now we need to actually modulate that using a sine wave. So let's draw that sine wave as well. Let me just delete this for time being. Or maybe let's just keep it here. No problem. Let me just pick out a sine wave. For that, we'll go to source and do the sine wave from here. Wave. So let's just plug it in the scope as well. So we have just let's just make it bigger so that we can accommodate a lot more inputs. Okay, so okay, so we have our uh, modulating signal and we have our input sequence. Now we need a product block because uh, modulation is just the multiplication of these two signals. So we need a product. Okay. You can get different math operations. Search for product. It is. Now 
just join it to the third port so done so that is basically all for our uh, ASK or it's, it's basically oh, okay let's get a better view okay let's, let me just set the parameters of sine wave first so amplitude is amplitude one is okay bias zero that's fine frequency you can change the frequency to two multiplied by pi multiplied by let's say three three hertz so we will get uh, three cycles in one second okay so let's just simulate this way oops i have my caps lock on So let me just simulate this one. Now the simulation. And let's just split the graph so that we can get a better view. From view, layout, and we need three graphs. So three graphs, and the graphs will be split right now. Let's just turn on the legend as well. I have made a small mistake that in the sine wave, I didn't choose a sample time. This sample time should be small. 0 0.001 or 0 0.01 should be fine. Let's simulate that again. Okay. Okay, so we are done. As you can see, this was our input sequence 10101010100. And this was our continuous sine wave which we used for modulation. Then we basically multiplied this to signals. The output is this one. Whenever the signal is high, we are getting some output. Whenever the signal is low, we are getting null. So this is our on off key. You can see the modulated signal's amplitude is varying according to the message. When the message has high, high, high sequence then we have some output in the modulated signal when the input sequence is low we do not have any any output this is basically on off key we can actually alternate this thing by choosing two different amplitudes for two different phases high and low we will just uh, see that in the next phase but let's first demodulate the signal we will uh, demodulate the signal we, demodulation means actually we will retrieve this sequence back from this input signal so let's do it so we can use coherent detection here for that we will need to multiply the modulated signal with the input sine wave again so we will do that so let's just copy the product block let's just press it here okay so this is our modulated signal right so we want to multiply Let's do that here. We want to multiply the modulated signal with our input sign wave. That's basically it. But as you know from the discussion of AM, there are different frequency components right now, which are all multiples of carrier frequency. So we need to pass the output signal through a low pass filter to actually filter out high frequency components. So we need a low pass filter. You can use both analog and digital filters but as we have we have been using analog filters so far i'm using analog you can use digital filters as well it's your choice so this was our most used analog filter here i'm using this one you can use digital filter as well if you want i'm uh, choosing the pass bandage frequency to be our carrier frequency so 2 pi multiplied by 3 okay basically it. Now one thing to mention here, I am keeping the filter order 8, I am not changing that. Now we will get the demodulated, demodulated signal but this time the signal will, be, will not be as smooth as the input. It will not just the binary wave that we have seen in the, uh, in the input. Let's just, let's just actually uh, get a feel of it, how does the demodulated signal look like at this stage. Copying the scope here. Okay, I, I I will not complete the whole simulation right now. I'm just 
trying to see how the uh, demodulated signal looks like at this phase. Okay, maybe let's let's compare this with the uh, input sequence. Let me just. Let's just run that right now. Okay, so let's just, just analyze the signals. Okay, as you can see, this is our input uh, sequence, which was perfectly binary, 1010. One, but the demodulated signal, if you look at it closely, you will see the similarity between these two signals. It's high here. You can see the signal is also kind of high in this region, then it's low and it's kind of low in this region, but it's not perfectly a binary sequence that we want. So we need some thresholding to do. If you remember from the theory lecture, we had, after the low pass filter, we had two more blocks. The first one was sampling and another one was uh, comparing to the threshold. So we don't need to do the sampling here because we will, uh, basically we are uh, doing this sample by sample because uh, in the computer, you cannot actually process a com continuous signal. Everything is sample based. So we do not need to do further sampling because in the theory we were talking about continuous signal. So we need sample sampling to actually get some samples. But in the computer it's already sampled. So we do not need further sampling process. But we need still need to do the comparison with the threshold process. So let's just uh, bring in a new block which is compared to the threshold block. I am just I'm just gonna search for compare here. It will give me my desired block. This is compared to constant. Just bring it up, and let me put it here. Okay. So, okay. so from the graph, you can see. Let's choose a threshold from here. Let's choose point two as a threshold because everything above point two seems to be high. Okay. So. Let's choose point 0.2 as a threshold. Point 0.2. And we want it to be 1 when it is greater than point 0.2. So let's just use greater than equal. Okay. Now simulate this one. So we are done. And this is our final simulated dem demodulated output. It's basically almost perfect except there is a delay from the original signal you can see the original signal is starting from zero but this signal is starting from somewhere 0.2 seconds so there is a delay introduced to this demodulated signal so why this delay the reason is our analog filter if you remember from your dsp course when we whenever we are designing a filter there are a lot of delay delay blocks or z inverse components so the more the filter order, the more delay components you are introducing to your signal. So let's just decrease the filter order. Let's make it two. Let's see how does that work. Two. Okay. And then simulate that again. Okay. Now the delay is decreased. So if you just Compare the performance of the higher filter order to lower filter order, you will see that when the filter order is lower, the delay is decreased. You have less delay right now. But look at the demodulated signal, original one. You will see much more ripple here. When the filter order was 8, the ripple was very less. But now when the filter order is decreased to 2, we have decreased the delay because the more the filter order, the more the delay components are required. So whenever the filter order is less, the delay is less that's fine but the ripple you will see is much higher so you need to adjust this what 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 is your priority if your priority is less delay because for this case we will be uh, doing thresholding process anyway so the ripple is not a concern for this particular case so in this case we will concentrate more on the less delay less delay part so we are choosing less filter order but do not make it 
very less like do not make it one if i choose one here then this might create a problem or might not let's just take it out if uh, three order one is a problem so uh, in this case filter order one is not a problem filter order one is also doing okay but you can see there is a ripple which is very high and what will be the effect let's say my constant is 0.5 if my constant is 0.5 then this filter order one will not work you can see that this is my threshold my signal after, after thresholding so this is not anything close to our input sequence that is because the ripple is too high so if your ripple is too high you might want to choose a lower threshold so 0.2 was working okay i think filter order 2 1 is very less let's just keep it 2 so this is our final simulation okay so we are we are finally satisfied with our output there is some delay but it's not uh, sort of a lot it's maybe something around point as 0 0.05 seconds it's it's reasonable amount of delay you can use digital signal digital filter as well i encourage you to do this experiment with digital filter in the report section you will need to analyze this signal with the spectrum analyzer or you have to analyze the signal with the frequency domain as well and you have to correlate the your results with the theory discussion okay so let's move on to our uh, next thing which is actually amplitude shifting with two different amplitudes for one and zero so i have already uh, i have already built that signal for you so this is this is the So I have already built the uh, circuit for two diff uh, for generating uh, a ASK wave with two different amplitudes. So for this case, we have we still have the Bernoulli generator, our input sequence. We are doing the same thing that we did for FSK. We were passing the input sequence through one path, and in the in another alternate path, we are actually inverting that. And inverting means actually converting 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. We are achieving this inverting, inverting, let me just put out my sketchbook. You can see we are using two paths here. The first path where the Bernoulli generator output is fed. This is our input sequence fed without any modification but in this path you will see there is a subtractor block a subtractor block so in the subtractor let's see let's say this is the subtractor block plus and minus in the subtractor block we have the plus input terminal is fed to one it's fed to one and the minus terminal is coming from the Bernoulli generator Bernoulli generator so whenever the Bernoulli generator is zero one minus zero is one so input is zero we are getting output one but when the Bernoulli generator is one we are getting one minus one is equal to zero so you can see by doing this thing we are basically inverting our signal so in this case we are just inverting our signal so this is our let's say this is our uh, generator was one zero one zero so it is fed in this path and in this path the input is actually this is the output of the uh, subtractor so this is actually zero one zero one the invert of this input sequence so then we are multiplying this input sequence with a sine wave and we are multiplying this input sequence with another sine wave remember one thing these two sine waves should have these two sine waves should have same frequency the frequency should be same but the amplitude must be different for this we have chosen 5 for 1 we have chosen 5 volt for uh, 0 we have chosen 2 volts okay so now the output of the modulated uh, signals are summed here and uh, then we are in this scope we are actually uh, viewing uh, two two outputs 
the first one is from the binary generator which is the input sequence and another one is the modulated signal so let's just check this uh, signal out let me just simulate once again Simulation is done. Now let's take this out. Okay, so this was our input sequence: one zero one zero one 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 zero one one zero zero. As you can see, we have two different amplitudes, but the frequency is fixed throughout the signal. It's the modulated signal. You can see whenever the input is high or one, you will get a higher amplitude. Let's say it's five volts. But whenever the input signal has zero or the low state then you will get a lower amplitude you can see so we have achieved our goal now this is not the end we still have to demodulate our signal so how we can do that there are multiple ways but one very straightforward way is to just multiply your modulated signal with one of the sine waves you don't need to separately do coherent detection to both the outputs you are just getting the modulated signal and then just multiply it with one of the sine waves. You don't need to multiply it with both of them. Just multiply it with one of the sine waves. So what will happen? In the in the next phases, we will do the same thing. We will just pass it to the Butterworth filter and then we will do a comparison with the threshold. But setting threshold is very crucial here. Let's check it out why this is very crucial. Okay. So this was the output of the low pass filter so we are basically multiplying our modulated signal with one of the sine waves so let's say the sine wave uh, that we were using two sine waves and one of them had an amplitude of five and another one had an amplitude of three let's say we are multiplying that modulated signal with the sine wave which had the amplitude of five volts so in that case the portion which in the modulated signal which had five volts amplitude that will get a larger boost because 5 times 5 is greater than 5 times 3. So you will see that amplitude difference in that uh, low, pass, uh, low pass filter, sorry, low pass filter output. There is a significant difference in the amplitude level. This is the output of the low pass filter. There is a difference in the amplitude level even if we are just multiplying this with a single sine wave. We are not multiplying this with, with two sine waves as we have seen in the FM. We are still using one si one single sine wave to multiply with the with the modulated signal. So after multiplying them, we are passing it through a low pass filter for filtering out the high frequency component. Then it is something like this. So there is some ripple, but the notable thing is you can see that there are two different amplitude levels in this in this signal. So one amplitude level is closer to let's say 12, another one is closer to let's say five so there are two two very clear distinct amplitude levels one is close to 12 and other one is close to five so if we want to retrieve our sequence you can see the sequence here one zero one zero one zero one one zero three so there is a close resemblance between these two signals but we need to use a threshold so what is the threshold we can use we can use anything between uh, six to ten i am using seven here you can use eight as well so let's let's just use the threshold you can see the threshold is choose here to seven so in the butterworth filter we are choosing the filter order to be four you can set the filter order to be two for less delay let's just take it out okay as i have said when you will decrease the filter order the delay will be decreased but the ripple will be much higher so there is a high ripple here it's very risky to work with this kind of signal because you can see the the fluctuation in both the high and low amplitude regions are very uh, very dominant so this is very risky to set a threshold here so let's just choose a higher filter order here because filter order 2 is not working definitely let's choose it to 4 4 was fine and you will see that the performance is increased by quite a lot take some time to simulate Okay, so in this case, the ripple is much less and much manageable. So we can safely set a threshold of 7 
and that threshold will give us this output which is basically the input uh, input sequence with some delay this delay is acceptable it is very close to 0.1 second delay so it's acceptable that's all for ASK in the next video we will talk about uh, FSK and PSK thank you